Hey hey, Marcus House with you here. Today we are going to do something pretty awesome. We are going to send an SSTO up into orbit without touching any keys at all. And we are going to do this using the KOS mod. Now if you check out this vessel here, this is called the Trident and it is loaded with three small space submarines. You may have seen an episode uh, probably a month or so ago where I actually sent this up and did a mission with these submarines. So this is quite a stable SSTO and uh, uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun playing around with these space submarines. So we're going to use this as our first demonstration vessel. So uh, we'll just open up the action groups actually so you can check this out. So in action group 10, we are toggling our solar panels. In action group 9, we are uh, deploying the cargo ramps. Uh, action group 8, decoupling the nodes, which is going to release our space submarines. Uh, action group 3, we actually are just switching the mode from uh, air breathing mode to closed cycle mode. So that's all that's doing there. Now this is a brand new game set up using 1.3 and we have a brand new sandbox crew here all ready to go, just the default crew. So what we have on the very front of this thing is our scriptable control unit. This is what is required for the KOS mod to actually get this thing running. And you can see here if we type in script, there's three different options, three different parts you can drop on. It doesn't really matter which one. Some of them have got slightly different capacities, but it doesn't matter much. So uh, yeah, in this case, I'm taking this off. You can uh, download this vessel. Uh, without this part and then just pop the part on. Now if you have not watched last week's episode I do recommend that you check that out here up in the top right. Uh, this is important because a lot of this stuff probably isn't going to make sense until you see just the basics of how you hook this up. So what we can actually do is create a file in the script slash boot folder and what this allows us to do is select that script straight from our scriptable control unit on the vessel. Now this is extremely handy because as soon as we hit the launch pad, this script is already going to automatically run without us touching anything at all. So we can have this little boot script that essentially here just does a few very core things. First of all, we are going to set our brakes to on so that we're not rolling around on the launch pad. The next thing we're going to do is open up the terminal there on line four. That's just a standard line to just automatically open the terminal so we can all see what's going on. Then what we are doing is copying our main SSTO script to the vessel, uh, printing out a few countdown messages there, and then finally running the main program. So you can see here, now that I've got that file saved, I can now select that on the scriptable control unit as our boot file. So now all we need to do here is head up and hit the launch button here straight out of the space plane hangar. And what's then going to happen is that boot file is going to run without us touching anything at all. And there it goes there. You can see the countdown 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now as soon as that boot file runs the SSTO program, it's going to then load this script here. So the first thing we are going to do is first a clear screen just to clear the terminal. The next thing we are doing is just setting the max stopping time to 6. This just makes the vessel move around a little more steadily because it can move a little bit abruptly, especially with a big vessel like this. The next thing we're doing is doing a quick few things. We're going to stage our first stage. We're going to set our brakes to off. We're then going to turn off stability assist because that just fights with the KOS system. So it's good to always have this off by default. We'll turn the lights on and then we'll lock ourselves at full throttle. Moving on down the script, you can see at line 27, we are setting the first level of physics warp just to make the launch go a little bit quicker. And we are then going to lock our steering to a, a heading of 90 degrees with a pitch of 12 degrees from the horizon. This is going to give us a slight climb to help us launch off the runway. So you can see here that everything happens simultaneously. We are now set with that 12 degree climb and as soon as we get off the launch pad, we can uh, look at raising our landing gear. So that's the next thing to look at. Down on line 34 here, we have a weight command which will just halt until our altitude is greater than 300 meters. We are then going to raise that landing gear. Down on line 39 now, until our ship apoapsis is greater than 600 meters, we are then going to increase our climb to 20 degrees from the horizon. That's going to make us rise a little bit faster. We are then just going to keep this climb until our apoapsis hits seven kilometers. And then we're just going to decrease again to a pitch of 10. And this is simply going to allow us to gain a lot more speed. So let's check out how all this goes. Okay, so our first event is at 300 meters. Our landing gear should come up and there they go there. 
shortly after we should hit that 600 meters and then climb there we go so we're climbing at 20 degrees you can see it's pitched up there by itself and it is now going to maintain this pitch until our apoapsis hits that seven kilometer mark so you can see there a lot of different commands get executed very quickly just in that initial takeoff now because this vessel is powered by rapier engines uh, we basically have to make sure that we level out above seven kilometers and we just then wanted to build up some speed so coming up here our apoapsis is just about to hit seven kilometers and we should see it pitch down just as we leave this thick part of the atmosphere this is when we can build up our speed so that our surface speed can get above 450 meters per second that's when those rapiers begin uh, really gaining their thrust quickly so you can see here uh, we're waiting there until the speed there gets above 450 meters per second then we're going to climb again and pitch 20 degrees what we then want to do is keep climbing at that same pitch until our apoapsis reaches around 21 kilometers and then what we're going to do is keep level and build up that final bit of speed so you can see here we're just about to pass that 450 meters per second with our surface speed then we're going to pitch there we go so the great thing about using this KOS mod to keep adjusting your flight profile is you can try slightly different variations just to see how much fuel you end up with when you get to orbit and you can really start to get a good idea what the best launch profile is for your particular space plane although they will all behave sort of similar as long as they've got a similar thrust to weight ratio you can see here that our apoapsis is just about to hit 21 kilometers and there we go it is going to now pitch down to try and keep level now essentially we still need to keep a slight pitch just to stop ourselves dropping we want to sort of try to stay at around this altitude it will drop a little with the pitch that I've got here and that is in order to just gain a little more speed we want to get our surface speed right up to around 14 to 15 hundred meters per second on line 56 here you can see that we are still keeping a pitch of around nine degrees from the horizon that's going to keep us sort of staying fairly level as soon as we hit a ground speed of 1450 meters per second we are going to switch to closed cycle mode using action group three and we are then going to pitch to 30 degrees we're going to pull up quite hard we have now passed 1400 meters per second just waiting to get to 1450 meters per second 40 45 and there we go we are now pitching up 30 degrees and we have got the closed cycle engaged those two things happen very rapidly together so we want to keep on climbing at this point until our apoapsis hits 70 kilometers and then we want to throttle down to 20 percent of our full thrust and this is just going to allow us to have a more fine control of that apoapsis until we reach 81 kilometers and then we are going to have main engine cutoff and the steering will be locked to the prograde mark so you can see here we're hitting 70 kilometers now there we go we have now pitched down and just at 20 percent throttle now until we hit 81 kilometers so just raising that apoapsis ever so slowly just for accuracy and 81 kilometers there main engine cutoff so we still have our time warp set to that first level there we want to cut that time warp as soon as our time to apoapsis is less than 20 seconds and then we want to wait until around 12 and a half seconds to start our circularization burn so we're going to lock that steering to exactly 90 degrees at a zero degree pitch and we're going to lock that to full throttle so here we go here just coming up to 80 kilometers now just a little further and you can see we've just dropped time warp a few more seconds and there we go we are starting that circularization burn so this burn is timed just so that as we hit our apoapsis we circularize and you can see three two one and there we go we have a fairly perfect circularized orbit at exactly 81 kilometers on line 82 there you can see we were setting a variable called target pe target periapsis which was going to be 500 meters less than our apoapsis and we were going to wait until our ship periapsis was greater than the target periapsis and then we were going to lock the throttle to zero uh, which is essentially cutting the engine right off and print out a simple message you are in orbit after only two seconds we are then telling the ship to turn retrograde setting the warp to one again so that we can actually turn retrograde faster waiting 150 seconds and that should then have us fully turned retrograde so that we can perform the next action 
So the only reason I've got this set to 150 seconds is because you can see it's quite a pig to turn. It does pitch quite quickly, but it can't roll very quickly at all, so it needs a little bit of time to get back into action. You wouldn't need 150 seconds if you were using a small vehicle. Now, as soon as that 150 seconds is up, we are then going to deploy a whole bunch of action groups. Action group 10 there is going to deploy our solar arrays. We're going to wait for a few seconds, open the cargo ramps, which is action group nine, wait for a few seconds. We're going to then deploy those space submarines with decoupling those docking ports. We are then just going to throttle up to 20% just for one second, wait 15 seconds until our space submarines are out of the way. Then we're going to close those cargo ramps Finally, we're just going to set a few pilot defaults. We're going to set the stability assist back on and uh, yes, program complete. So here we go. The solar panels are about to deploy. There they are. The cargo bay is open. Docking ports undocked. A very quick thrust and there they go. The space submarines are out ready for use. Now those space submarines, they are quite handy actually. You can take them to the moon, take them to Minmus. They can even return back home to Kerbin and land. Uh, there is a full mission using these right here. <laughs> these little space submarines are great if you want to do rescues and any of those sorts of things. Small missions around Kerbin's sphere of influence. There is of course a link to this entire vessel in the description along with all my other episodes. But what we can actually do here is try the same script, exact same script, haven't modified this at all, with a completely different vessel. Now this is a vessel that I used to get up to Duna. We can just drop on this exact same scriptable control system item there and select that boot file, hit launch, and basically let that autopilot that we have now written uh, take control of the entire launch for us. Now again, uh, this all depends a little bit on the vessel being stable in terms of its center of mass, center of lift. It needs to of course have uh, a fairly adequate thrust to weight ratio, otherwise it won't be able to climb at the same at the same pitch and all that sort of thing. So you can see this here is doing quite a good job. We are easily here up over well, 300 meters per second there now. And you can see there, of course, that it's following the exact same launch profile. The terminal there showing the exact same printed readouts that it was showing for our previous SSTO. So as I mentioned at the start of the episode, uh, if you didn't understand some of that or you would like to know more, uh, just check out that first episode that is uh, linked there as a card. That was uh, quite useful in terms of just some basic commands before we got into this, uh, well, more advanced stuff, I guess. So there goes that closed cycle mode again, right up to 70 kilometers, then slowly up to 81 kilometers. And just because the thrust to weight ratio on this vessel isn't quite as good, it's not going to circularize quite as well. I mean, you would actually slightly adjust your script depending on the thrust to weight and all this sort of thing. So you can see here we get up to around 12, uh, 12 seconds to our apoapsis. And there we go, kicking that in there. It doesn't quite get the circularization quite as perfect as we did last time, just because I did finally adjust that, but we still got quite close. Uh, it's quite a circular orbit there. Of course, our previous script was supposed to drop the space submarines out the back. This vessel doesn't do that. It actually deploys it out the front. So, of course, uh, running the exact same script, we give it a little burst forwards and just bump it out of the way. So, yes, you would adjust things like that, of course, uh, or even probably copy multiple scripts over to your craft so you could do multiple things first to get to orbit and the next script might do something totally different. So I would like to thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this particular episode. I don't mind doing this programming stuff and showing you guys. If you do enjoy it, please do let me know because I can keep making this sort of stuff if uh, if everybody responds well to it. So uh, yeah, please do take a second, give it a thumbs up. All of your support, of course, is just awesome. If you have any questions for me, whack them down in the comments below. Thank you all those awesome subscribers out there of mine. And for those that haven't yet, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we will see you in the next video.